everyone. Today we want to take a look at stretching. Oh, it feels good even just to say the word, doesn't it? Even if we don't do a very good job of it, everybody knows that stretching feels good. So this should be an enjoyable lesson. Um, this is the this is the little introduction for all the groups, and then there will be a different version of the exercise depending on what your PR group is following right after. So in the little introduction, we just want to take a look at what we need to get ready, the preparation, and what are the keys we need to remember that turn this into something really wonderful. So, um, the preparation. <laughs> People like to skip over this stuff. It's like, oh, get to the good stuff, get to the good stuff, right? Well, if you don't get this stuff, you will never be able to do anything else. This is the kind of stuff that in years gone by, you know, I would mention to people, it's like, here's a tip. So, you know, you make sure that you can do this and they would get like universally ignored. It's like, what the heck? I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you don't have a big spacious area where you can move around in all directions without running into things or tripping over things, how are you supposed to move around? Right? You can't like, you just can't. But this is actually a really, really, really hard thing for people to do. You know, back in the day, I had emptied my house of all the furniture so that I could make a great jungle gym for kids. Solved my problem. I wasn't really stopping to think of where normal people are at, right? And the challenges that they face, this clearing an area thing is a big deal. It's a game stopper. It was almost it was a game stopper with almost everyone I ever tried to offer a little advice to, right? So what's going on there? Well, partly what's going on there is something that you're not even aware of. You know, most people, if they don't have some open space, they just figure, oh, you know, I know I got a messy house or, oh, I just didn't think I needed it. Or, you know, they have some kind of excuse and they don't realize this is a lot bigger than anyone realizes. No one has empty space anywhere. There's a bias against it in our culture. If you stop to think about it, what happens in the course of a day? You know, you get up, you're on a bed. So that's something weird. It's not like you're lying on a mat on the floor or something, right? So it's like one kind of equipment. And then you move to a bathroom. Well, now you got to work with the sink so you don't make a mess. And you got to work with the toilet in a certain way or things aren't going to work out there, right? Like it's just, and, and then if you eat breakfast, you go to the kitchen. Now you got to work around the table, you know. We just move from one position in machine to another over and over and over until we go back to bed. We don't have open spaces at all. I think partly it was just kind of accidental because we were interested in playing with all of our toys, right? But it's more than that. I mean, if you stop and think about it, you know, I was a cleaning lady for over, well over 20 years now, have been a cleaning lady, right? <coughs> None of the people whose houses I cleaned had any open spaces. Didn't matter how beautiful, gorgeous, big, and fancy their house was. There were no open spaces. That's a waste of space, right? So what do they do if they want to get some exercise? They go to a gym. Well, what do you see when you get into a gym? <laughs> a great big building filled with really enormous pieces of equipment. You got little standing stations for everything under the sun. There's no big open spaces. There's going to be a couple of empty classrooms off on the side. But good luck getting into one because there's probably a class going on for yoga or something, right? No empty spaces. We don't have empty spaces. People get criticized every time. Like If you walk into somebody's house and they have a big empty space, it's like, oh, what are you going to do with this? There's no concept of actually leaving it there so that people can do a wide variety of things in it whenever they want. So they can actually move around and play with their body and not trip over stuff that, that they don't want to use right now, right? So, okay, you get, it, you get the idea. We need to, we need, you know, the first thing you need to do is um, give this some serious thought. It's like, oh, okay, I need to create an open space. Um, you know, it's not, and you, it's not just a matter of clearing out an area, right? You can't just, you can't just be like, okay, I can, I can reach my arms out this far. So as long as it's as far as I can reach or as far as I can kick out, that should be good, right? No. Okay. You need to be able to move around a bit without running into things. You really do need a largish area, if at all possible, to move around in. 
and you're also going to want to think about the floor, right? I mean, if you're rolling, I mean, when it's when it's summertime, not a big deal. It's gorgeous outside. Grass is clean, right? I mean, but I mean, honestly, even mud is clean compared to the kind of dirt and nastiness that gets ground into most people's floors. You know, it, again, as a cleaning lady for well over 20 years now, I can think of three houses, including my own, where I would be comfortable rolling around on the floor. <laughs> Right? So maybe, you know, lots of people, when they do floor work, they have a yoga mat, right? That can be okay, but they really are very skinny, and I've seen a lot of problems with that. I just, it, it, it forces you into this, this line sort of exercising thing that just not really very good. You want a bit of an area. If you want to make it a rug that you roll up every time you use it so that it doesn't get nasty, that's probably a brilliant idea because it's a lot easier than trying to keep the floor clean, especially if you live with other people who don't give a rip, right? <laughs> so clear an area, absolutely. So unfortunately, half of America is still going to be totally stuck right here. No matter what they do, they cannot think of a way to clear out an area at all. And there is actually a trick you can use if you are one of the poor folks in this desperate category. Maybe you know you got a hoarder house, you got stuff piled to the nines, there's no way you want to get rid of this stuff, you're not ready to deal with that, you know, it's just too much. Maybe you're not. Maybe, like all of my nieces and nephews, you just have 10 siblings in the house and you can't even get the middle of the kitchen floor clear at midnight if you wanted to. There's always something going on, right? Absolutely. The thing to do in these situations is to get yourself a big board. Basically the size of your bed. You know, it doesn't have to go inch all the way end to end, but it needs to be a large board that's at least, you know, three quarters of the length of your body that fits over top of most of your mattress. That is the sneaky way to give yourself some open space. Now, if you're a kid, a single wide mattress isn't really that fabulous. It would be a much better idea to get a board for maybe your mom and dad's bed so that, you know, they're not going to use it all the time. You know, if you can find somebody with a largish bed that they don't mind you using sometimes, well, then you can just throw your bed board onto the bed and now you have a clear area that you don't have to worry about. It is a bit of a pain in the butt taking care of that board, but most people have a bed that's parked up against a wall. So you just make sure that that wall is clear. If you have to clear it out, clear it out so that you have a place to put your bed board <laughs> and you now have an open space. Part of the beauty of beds is because you'll, you'll have more space than it looks like because your arms can always stick off the sides of the mattress and stuff, right? It'll feel more spacious than it actually is. You know, if you were clearing an area in your home, you want to be able to walk around a bit. So this is definitely the handicapped version. You can't exactly walk around a whole lot on something as small as a single wide mattress, right? But you get the idea. <clears throat> There is, no matter how desperate you are, no matter how hard it might be to clear an area to move around, you can always make a whopping improvement and your body's going to feel it. You know, if all you do is just get that bed board, your body will feel the difference. Absolutely. Because it'll finally have a place that it can do the things that you have never allowed it to do. Right? So that's the big deal for prep. You have got to find a way to clear an area and you can cheat by using your bed. The other suggestion is to pull out a mirror, you know, and I haven't focused on this much yet. You know, in the beginning, you just try to mentally envision the kind of thing we're talking about. Like one of the keys you learn for the broken back float, of course, is that you don't ever, with a stick person posture, you don't ever bend your back, right? Maybe I'm not, there we go. That's better. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you can go as far as you can go. You can bend all of your joints as much as you like but you don't bend your back. Well, <clears throat> how do you know if you're really accomplishing that without a mirror, right? Lots of times what happens is, you know, we, we have it in our head. It's like, okay, you know, I want this nice, tall shoulders back, hips lined up, all this wonderful stuff. And you're making an effort. But when you actually look in the mirror, instead of it being shoulders back, tail out, it's more like this. 
but it's such a big difference to you that it feels like you have proper posture, right? Now that you're actually starting to, you know, you're doing more than just first exploring like a little baby, you want to make sure that you have some feedback on what your form actually looks like. You don't have to have a huge mirror. You know, if you have a smaller one, just find a way to set it up in the right spot somehow so that you can see most of your body. And um, that way you have some feedback. Absolutely. Um, even if you have somebody like me standing next to you as a guide, I absolutely would know where to put my finger to help you adjust into good posture. And then you'd be able to feel it, right? Um, basically, then you don't need a mirror. Absolutely. And you will learn how that feels. And then your posture is just going to be good because you're always going after that feeling. It definitely works. But if you don't have me standing next to you, you need something like it. And that's where mirrors work. So that's about it. The keys, of course, is the stick person posture that you learned in the broken back float. Make sure you don't bend your back. And also the belly breathing that hopefully you have started to notice now that you've started paying a little attention to your breathing. You hopefully have noticed, because, you know, I didn't, don't want to mention too much with the breathing at first, right? Because it's so weird to pay attention to it all. But now that you've been playing with it for a little bit, you probably noticed that you feel, when you feel like you're doing good breathing, where it feels better and more is moving and stuff, you may have noticed that your belly moves when you do that. When you're breathing in, your belly is going out. And that happens every time. If you just, yeah, maybe I should move my hands here. If you just watch somebody breathe, you can actually notice, if you're watching very closely, you can actually notice whether they're breathing with their belly or not because their body will move more. When I breathe fully, with my whole lungs, that's what moves my belly. It also moves my shoulders. It moves my whole core a little bit. But if you're one of the people that uh, noticed that you have a much longer in than you have an out, you may have also noticed, because they usually go together, that you don't really move your belly when you breathe. You know, if you stop and do this on purpose, you know, think of a, a bodybuilder with six-pack abs, right? Just, just make yourself you know, solid and kind of tense and don't let your belly move, right? And just breathe like that for a minute. My shoulders aren't moving anymore, are they? If you're watching closely, you can still see my chest going up and down, but you don't see the motion that happens when you're breathing with your belly, do you? No, those two kind of go together. So this is gonna become really important as you're stretching. You can't do something like stretching if you haven't already learned how to breathe. It does not work. Your muscles need to flex. As you're flexing, there's oxygen going in and going out. And if you're trying to stop, not trying to, but if you are stopping that process just by not breathing properly, your stretching is not going to work. So <clears throat> that's key number two. Keep your stick person posture from the first cleaning lesson and your belly breathing from the second cleaning lesson, these are things to do all the time. That's kind of uh, something you'll notice with the cleaning lessons. It's not something extra you're doing, like fixing your furniture. That's more for feeding, right? It's like we wanna do things to support our new habits. And we are calling this stretching video a feeding video, just like the furniture, but really it does work both ways. Stretching absolutely works as a cleaning thing that you can do with everything. You know, when I broke my back, uh, that's definitely what I learned how to do. Whatever I was doing, if I was doing gardening for somebody, I took my shoes off and I turned it into a little yoga party, right? If you work, it doesn't have to be that good, you know? It doesn't matter if you're cleaning toilets or, you know, doing laps as you're looking out for the kids. You can always find ways to stretch as you're doing things. Absolutely. Not many people do though, right? Again, we move from one station to another station to another station. So for people with more of a normal lifestyle, this stretching stuff is going to end up counting as something you do for feeding. It's, you know, if, if you enjoy being a monkey, then you don't need to have some kind of daily routine that helps you move around 
because you don't normally, right? But if you don't normally move around, then you need some kind of daily warm up that gets your body moving. Otherwise, it just won't, you know, use it or lose it. That's nature's law. So, um, <clears throat> you have also, of course, heard the third key. You always want to make sure you're wiggling your way. You're trying to work for this, you know, motionless motion kind of thing where it's just always kind of flowing and you're never trying to force things to happen. You know, it's not like you're making it. You want to let it happen, right? So <clears throat> that's true. But we want to clarify this a little more because there's a big beginner mistake that happens here. Classic mistake almost everybody trips over when they actually start trying to stretch. Hello there. Somebody wants to say hi. Um, and that is what exactly is full range? See, in the beginning, it's like, yeah, okay, I want to stretch. So if I want to go as far as I can, if I just reach as far as I can, this is, this is full range of motion. You know, it doesn't, you know, I can bind myself up. Heels, knees, hips, my shoulders back, my tail out, my chin up, and I reach. This is actually, okay, I got to move. Okay, between the cat and the camper topper, even I'm tripping over stuff in my own demonstration video here. There we go. So, there we go. That works a little better. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is great. This is full range of motion. I'm definitely reaching. You know, it's, it's not, you don't have to stay stuck in one position. This is the farthest side, okay? I'm just reaching as far as I can. But if I really try, okay, without lifting my heels off the ground, you probably can't see that, my feet are probably cut off for this video. If I don't lift my heels at all, I can actually reach an inch or two farther. Oh, if I really try to, but it'll set off a cramp in my back because I'm overextending. I'm actually pulling myself out of proper posture. And this is a very, very common beginner mistake. Why? Well, because motion feels good, right? If you're finally starting to move things that haven't been moving in a long time, your body is just like more, 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 right? You want to do more. Absolutely. It feels good. But remember, this is like the cracking your knuckles thing, okay? As soon as you're trying to force it, instead of just feeling your way and going as far as you can and calling it a day, as soon as you try to force it, damage gets done. If you're cracking your knuckles, you're going to get those happy brain chemicals that say, ooh, this is good for you because motion feels good. It's always going to feel good. But if you're not feeling your way, if you're doing it out of habit, or if you're trying to reach as far as you possibly can, you are going to pull yourself out and you're going to do damage. You're going to create scar tissue. You're going to pull things out of alignment. So that is a really, really, really important key. Oh, somebody's lonesome. You want to go as far as you can. So, okay, how can we do this better? Let's say let's say you're stuck in this more situation, right? It's like, well, okay, I'm reaching as far as I can upwards, but I really want to do more. What do I do next? Will you just shift the motion a little? Your body is actually going to lead the way. If you start paying attention, you'll notice that it'll... You'll just want to start, you know, if you start out with this, okay, you'll just want to do something slightly different. Maybe you push the motion out in a different direction. Maybe you do nothing more than turn your arms in the same position. I can feel that moving muscles in my back right here whenever I just do nothing more than twisting my arms, right? There's always ways to increase motion that do not involve pushing it farther. Okay, that is never a good idea. So, if you've got that clear, I think that's about it. Uh, we can now tackle a little routine. Well, actually, yeah, we can we can take care of this right at the end here. Um, okay, so we've already mentioned that this stretching stuff can count as cleaning work, like something you do all the time as you do whatever, and also as feeding work, something you do kind of like extra work, like fixing your furniture, like a little routine once a day <clears throat> to get you to do stuff that you aren't going to do otherwise, right? Absolutely. It's going to be different for everybody. You're going to have to play around to find out which one you want to start with. Everybody's going to start with one of them and end up in the other place. Like in the beginning, 
um, you know, some people, it's like if they try to think about following instructions to do something, it kind of throws their brain. But if you give them just a simple goal, like listen to your body mind, right? All you have to do is start moving in ways that seem to feel good to you. You don't need any instructions. You really will reinvent yoga. I kid you not. Okay, there's a reason those are common forms that get used. It's because that's just what your body is going to want to do. And it creates health with your system. So that's fine. If you do that in time, you will find that you do develop a bit of a routine that wakes everything up, right? In the beginning, it might be limited, right? I mean, if you're just following whatever happens to feel good to you, well, then you don't really know what you're missing, do you? I mean, that's the reason you take a nice fancy yoga class or you do a little routine and follow somebody's instructions because they're going to give you an overview that makes sure that it wakes up all of your parts and you're not missing important things, right? That's true. But if you stop to think about it, maybe you need to miss them, right? Maybe in the beginning, um, you're so you're so tense in some one area that you're going to have to do a lot of work on just that area and nothing else before you can even think about doing a complete anything, right? Uh, there's, there's, you know, this, this routine stuff is overrated. You know, lots of people um, can have a lot of success starting out just playing like a little kid. And in time, you will develop your own routine. But some people feel the opposite, you know, like they're just lost if you don't give them something to start with because they don't really get this feeling your way thing. They don't really feel their body mind yet. It's like, okay, well, I put my arms out because I saw that's what you do, but I don't know. It doesn't feel spectacular to me and I don't know what I'm doing wrong or different, right? Like you just, if you're totally clueless, a few simple clear instructions in the beginning can be really helpful. It gets you off the ground. It gets you an idea of stuff to play with. And as you attempt to follow these instructions, in time, you will start to be able to feel things. So, you would go in the direct, the, the reverse order, right? You start out with some instructions, and over time, you develop the ability to be able to feel your way and listen to your body mind without needing any instructions. These are both important skills. And you're not going to have a complete experience of stretching unless you have a chance to play with both. So you get the idea. Um, in the beginning, this is going to be more like a cleaning lesson, but um, we're all going to put it down as a feeding lesson because it's going to be something you want to keep as a part of your lifestyle so that you have a body to use, <laughs> right? Okay, I think that's about it. I'll see you in the exercises. Namaste.